So right now I have Torito in here. I believe we got Torito in either the April or the May buyout. Um, he is a 13 year old Mustang. And I believe that he has been ridden before and that he's had some stuff done with him. However, when he got here, he was vacuuming pretty green. He actually bucked somebody off. So I decided that we're gonna do a complete restart on him. And in this video, you're gonna see what I like to see before we go ahead and start a horse. Um, this section will cover groundwork and what we're looking for with groundwork before we just throw a saddle on and climb up and pray for the best. So we're gonna get you prepared before that. First, I really just wanna make sure that he's leading up freely. And he's had some work done, so when you stop, he stops. When you back up, he'll back up. So he knows a lot of that stuff. So we know the hole isn't there. From there, I might work on sending around. And I'm gonna start off with as light as pressure as possible to get him going. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna tell, and I might not need to reinforce, but I'm gonna ask again. And that time he went without me having to tell him. I just want him to keep himself going. If he wants to move faster, that's fine. But I want him to be shaped up to me. I want his nose to be kind of tipped in a little bit. I want his ear to be on me paying attention. And eventually I want him kind of stepping over with that hind end away from me to just kind of shape up a little bit better. So right now he's doing pretty good. If they're not quite stepping in or out like you want them to, you can bump up on their nose and that'll get their nose in and also help get the hip out. Whoa, that looks really good there. So I'll give him a break. Let me go ahead and switch directions. I'm gonna ask. And that time I didn't need to tell at all for that sign. Give him a little slack. And I'm not having to correct him too much right now on this side. He's paying attention to me pretty good. So you need to be able to make sure they understand. Unless you say that magic word to stop, that they need to keep going. Even if I'm bumping to get that hip out, he needs to keep himself moving forward. And the goal for this is not just to send your horse flying around the round pen. You want it to be controlled. And like I said, you want to look for that nose to be tipped in, that ear to be on you. And you want that inside hind leg to kind of go out a little bit. Whoa. And it's important not to drill on this stuff. If you get a couple steps in the right direction, call that good. Don't just sit there and continue to run the horse around and keep bumping on his face. If he makes a step, call it good. Go back, work on it again tomorrow. And the brakes are really important. You wanna make sure that you give them brakes before you just go into something else. That way they can kind of distinguish between the different things that you wanna do with them. I also want to work on getting him to lower his head. I'll have a little bit of pressure here on the bottom and a little bit of pressure up here on the top on his pole. And I'll just apply a little bit of pressure. I might build up a little bit. And if he gives me a slight change, I'll release it. He doesn't necessarily have to drop his head down to his knees on the first try. He just has to try to to figure it out. He's got to try to figure out what this pressure means. And if he wants to tip his nose down just a, just a slight eighth of an inch, it doesn't matter. If he tries, you got to release that pressure. And I might give him a bigger break on that. Just sit here and pet him, give him some encouragement. And I'll go ahead and go again. Like I said, I'm not looking for perfection today. I'm just looking for a little bit of progress.
And I'm gonna call that good for him on that today. Like I said, you do not wanna drill. You just wanna make baby steps towards what you're looking for. And if you give nice good breaks on stuff like that when they're giving you tries, when you come back out tomorrow and do it again, they'll be even better. I also wanna work on flexion. Hi. And I think he does have some vision issues in one of his eyes here. But he needs to get used to this regardless. Right there is all you need. You just need your horse to be able to move his head a little bit over. You don't need your horse to be touching its side with this exercise. You just need him to be able to feel that pressure and come off of it. So I'm going to show you again. I'm going to push him over here. So right here with this, if he'll stay, when I pick up here, he needs to start moving his head over. I don't want him moving his feet, I just want his head. And when he gives me that try, I'll give him a quick break, go to the other side. Like I said, I don't want him moving his feet, so I might stick with him a little bit right here until, it, until he quits moving his feet. And then just ask for that head. And if you come up a little bit with your hand, sometimes it helps him a little bit. Right there. He gave me a try, so I'll give him a break. And give him a little reward here. I'll try again. Good boy. There you go. Go one more time on this side. Bring him over here. Good boy. And typically, I would work on disengaging hindquarters too. But I want him to be able to figure out that every time I ask for this doesn't mean I'm going to ask him to move his hip over as well. So I'm going to go and work on a few other things and I'm going to come back to working on moving his hindquarters. I might ask him to move his shoulders a little bit. So I'll put his head over and put my hand kind of where the cinch area is to ask him to step over in the front there. And it's important when you're doing this, when you're asking him to move the shoulder over, that he steps over in the front. If your horse is stepping back here, that is not correct. You have to wait until you see that uh, momentum shift forward and the foot go over the front. He did really good on that side, so I'm not going to do any more on that side. I'll ask him to flex over here. Put my hand in the cinch area. Get him to step over. Now when I say the cinch area, I'm putting pressure right about here. And it doesn't always take much. You always want to start off with as little pressure as possible and build yourself up if you need it. I'm going to work on an exercise called changing directions or switching eyes with horses. I feel like I say this a lot, but what they see out of one eye does not transfer over to the other eye. So it does not transfer in their brain what they're seeing out of this side and out of this side. You actually have to show them the things out of both sides in order for them to pick it up. Whoa, what was that? So with this exercise, you're gonna get the lead rope. We got a 25 foot lead rope here today. You can use a 16 footer, um, maybe even a 12 footer. But the longer it is, the more you could help your horse out. 
You just want to flip that around his butt. I'm going to wait for him to kind of relax with that pressure there. I'll go down and I'll pull pressure here and I want to step more towards his hip to get him to turn and look at me out of the other eye there. It's really important too. Don't drag your lead rope on the ground. If he's coming towards you, take that slack out of there. Another thing I always say too, is have your lead rope organized. You don't want to have coils wrapped up around your hand. So I'll do this side now. And if he wants to move around a little bit, that's fine. There we go. He might get stuck. I'm going to try to help him out. I'm going to get back to his hip. I'm going to give him a minute to think about that, and I'm going to do that side again. That time he did do it a little bit better. He didn't get stuck as much. So I'm gonna end that for him. There you go, buddy. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to disengaging the hindquarters uh, we call it also the emergency brake, or it sets you up for the one rein stop if you're in the saddle. It is very important to have this on your horse, so if your horse takes off, you can get it back. So I'm going to go right back here to flexion. I do not want him to anticipate, so if he's moving his feet, I'm going to wait. There he goes. Put pressure right here where the back cinch would go. And get him to step over. And it's the same thing with the back is in the front. When you get them to step over, you want that foot crossing over in front of the other foot, not behind it. Good boy. We'll go again. He's not anticipating me. This is what we want. If I would have went straight into it, he might be anticipating me a little bit when I asked for this flexion. But now he knows how to distinguish between the two. Good boy. We'll give him a big break with that. All right, now for the other side, wait a minute. Hold on. Ask for that flexion. Pressure here where the back cinch would go. And I'm gonna hold it until he steps over in front and I'll release. I'm using very minimal pressure. I'm probably using less than a half a pound of pressure when I'm doing this. With your horse, you might need to get all the way up to 20, 25 pounds of pressure before they finally realize, that, oh, they want me to step over. But you always want to start off with as little pressure as possible. And if you need more, build up gradually. Don't just go straight to 25. Good boy. Oui. Good job, kid. That is pretty much everything that I want to see with groundwork before getting ready to start my horse. I want them to be able to check out on all this stuff. Now there's still some things that he needs a little bit of work on like lowering his head, but we can get all that in the next couple of days. I might ask him to do it a couple more times a little bit later today, but that's pretty much everything that I like to see 
with Groundwork.